In this video, we're going to talk about chemistry. We'll talk about what it is and what it's used for. Let's just start with this. Chemistry is central. It's central to understanding so much of the world, and central to understanding basically all other sciences like biology and physics. So what can chemistry help us understand? Well, here's one. Have you ever opened up a can of pop and heard that rush of gas escaping? Ever wonder why that rush of gas comes out of the pop? And how did the gas get into the liquid in the first place? Well, when you study chemistry, you will learn that the solubility of a gas increases with higher pressure. So since the pop inside the can is under a lot of pressure, a lot of carbon dioxide gas is able to dissolve. When you open the can, the pressure inside the can goes down, and the CO2 is not able to be as soluble, and so some of it will escape, and that's what you hear. Here's something else chemistry can help us with. When you eat a piece of fruit, like an apple, there's a lot of sugar in that fruit, and it's in the form of fructose. Our body's unable to use fructose until it converts it into, our, into glucose. And this chemical reaction will actually occur inside of our body during digestion. We could go on and on with different examples of how chemistry can help us understand the world around us. But we still haven't answered what is chemistry. So let's take a look at the definition for chemistry. Chemistry can def be defined as the study of matter. Now matter is basically all the stuff in the universe. Okay, It's what all the stars and the galaxies and uh, basically everything out there is made up of. Let's take a look at our own planet. Here's the earth and what is it made up of? Well, it's made up of rocks and trees and water, but what's all that stuff made up of? If we zoom in on a beach and looked at all the individual grains of sand, we can know that sand was once pebbles that gradually broke down, and those pebbles were once rocks, and those were bigger rocks, and so on and so on and so on. And it was through the process of erosion that these rocks gradually broke down into sand. But what if we could break the sand down further? and further and further and further. Eventually there'd have to be a stopping point. And there is. All matter is made up of a fundamental unit called the atom. Scientists agree that the atom is one of the greatest discoveries in science. And we'll learn a little bit more about the atom later on. We know that everything is made up of matter. But what is matter? Well matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. Or in other words has volume. Mass is a word for describing the amount of matter, and we use grams or kilograms to describe that amount. So here's a quick test for you. Is your computer matter? Well, try to occupy the same space as your computer. Is it taking up space? For sure. And it definitely has a mass because we can pick it up and feel that. What about air? Is, air, is the air around you matter? Well, take your hand and wave it around. Can you feel it moving out of the way? It's taking up that space, and your hand is moving it out of the way so your hand can take up that space. But does the air have mass? Well, if you've ever blown up a balloon and thrown it into the air, you know that it sinks. And so, air has mass as well. Okay, so chemistry is the study of matter, and we know matter is anything that has mass and takes up space. It's a pretty broad definition, and chemistry really is a huge area of study. It actually began with alchemy, and alchemy was an ancient... Uh, study of substances. It goes, it goes back to the ancient Greeks um, and even medieval times and the big idea behind alchemy was taking different substances and try to turn them into another substance. Usually trying to take something worthless like lead and turn it into something precious like gold. There was other ideas as well with alchemy, but that was kind of the basic idea, mixing different things together, trying to come up with something new. Now, this was the beginnings of chemistry, and a lot of uh, tools that the alchemists use can still be found in chemistry labs. Okay, so chemistry is a very broad area of study, and there's actually five branches of chemistry. And we'll look at those five branches here. We have organic chemistry inorganic chemistry, analytical chemistry, biochemistry, and physical chemistry. Let's start here with organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is the study of compounds that contain carbon. And this is the chemistry of life because all living things are mostly made up of carbon. Inorganic chemistry is the opposite of organic chemistry. This is compounds that do not contain carbon. And it's really mostly based on elements that are metals. The next one here, 
analytical chemistry is really a chemistry that deals with careful measurements and trying to get quantitative data. In other words, data that has some numbers. Biochemistry is chemistry that studies the chemical processes that occur within living things. Like we mentioned with eating an apple, where our body will take that fructose and convert it into glucose. And then finally, we have physical chemistry, which can be defined as the physics of chemistry. And that is a quick introduction to this area of science known as chemistry.